We've known for years that cheap aspirin is a wonder drug that can help prevent heart attacks and strokes. But did you know that it can also help prevent bowel cancer? But who should take aspirin and when? There have been indications that aspirin had anti-cancer properties since the 1970s. But in the last few years, a series of trials has come up with the evidence. Aspirin's great. I think in the years to come, aspirin's going to be a very major weapon against bowel cancer. It's taken us 25 years to put the story together, but whichever way we look at it, people who take regular aspirin are at reduced cancer risk. All the evidence suggests that even low-dose aspirin will probably give you about 25% reduction and, and a higher dose, perhaps from our studies, could be as much as 50% reduction. So the benefits are really very significant indeed. Here at the Institute of Human Genetics in Newcastle, Professor Sir John Byrne has carried out a 20-year study on aspirin and bowel cancer. And he now has evidence that aspirin, taken over a prolonged period, can build up a defence against bowel cancer in later life. My opinion now is that the evidence is sufficiently strong to say that anyone over 50 could justifiably take a 75 milligram aspirin, the baby aspirin, every day. I think that we should start at 50 because the protective effect takes 10 years to kick in. So the sort of ideal window is probably between 50 and 65. So my feeling is that the, the prevention group are in the sort of 50 to 65 group. That's the ideal window to take it. So if you're between 50 and 65, you can cut your risk of cancer simply by taking a 75 milligram aspirin each day. But what about the small print? Aspirin fell out of favour after some people had problems with internal bleeding and ulcers. And that worry about side effects is still there. So if you do take aspirin to prevent cancer, you do face some risks. We know that, and if people take that on, that some of them are going to have bleeds, they're going to have ulcers. We can reduce the risk of that by responding to symptoms. If people are getting indigestion, they can talk to their doctor about taking an acid blocker to protect against that. And we can also, every year or two, have a blood count done to see that we're not becoming anemic. Uh, and if we are, then either stop the aspirin or better still take an acid blocker and take some iron tablets. More studies are going on and more evidence is appearing all the time. But remember that before you start taking aspirin every day, do go to see your doctor to talk through the possible side effects. So when we do the balance of benefit and cost, if you take aspirin now, there's a slight increase, you'll get bleeding and ulcers. But if you stick with it, 10 years from now, you'll have a reduced risk of heart attack, stroke and cancer. So that's the choice that we all now have to make. You could almost draw an analogy with going out jogging. You know, jogging is good for us, but occasionally people have heart attacks or get run over. But you still wouldn't disagree that it's good for us all to get exercise. So in the same way, there's a, there is always a trade-off in life and there is a small risk with low-dose aspirin. But compared to most of the things we take, we know more about aspirin than any other drug and we can deal with its side effects very effectively. Aspirin's really cheap and it comes in different sizes. This one's 300 milligrams, but what you should take every day is just 75 milligrams. However, if this is what you've got, the 300 milligram one, then press out a tablet, take a sharp knife, and you can just divide it into quarters. And that's what you take each day. Here's how the top docs tell me that they take their aspirin with milk, maybe with cereal in the morning or late at night. And that's what I'm going to do from now on. <laughs>